Hello, everyone. This is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We're in Luke 17, verse 10, 1 John chapter 5, verse 3, and Acts chapter 2, verse 12. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Lord God, for this word. Thank you for showing us how to walk uprightly in your ways. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, Luke 17, verse 10. So you also, when you have done all that you were commanded, say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done what was our duty. All right, and so we know that as believers, when we come under Christ's lordship, we serve him, right? The The things that we do um, are not for our salvation, they are for the fact that this is this is our duty, right? We're now sons. When you get adopted into a household, you don't just say, oh, well, I'll just sit here on the couch, right? When you're adopted as a son or a daughter, you need to take out the trash. You need to maintain the household the way the rest of the sons and daughters do, right? Otherwise, you're not considered a son or a daughter. You're considered something else, right? Just a leech or a person who's not um, actually a part of the family. When you become the part of a family as an adopted member, you take on the roles and the responsibilities of a son or a daughter. And, and actually, the word actually says we are more than sons or daughters. We actually have purposes, we have roles to play and, and God has given us gifts, right? And so it says in Luke 17, 10, so you also, when you have done all that you were commanded, say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done what was our duty. So it, it, there, there need not be any accolade, right? At the end of each day, there need not be any praise towards us. Why? Because our reward is in eternity. Our reward is is the is partly the fact that we even get to participate in eternity, right? With God rather than anywhere else. So we need to just say we we were doing our duty. We're unworthy servants. We haven't done anything to be worthy, right? Except for except Christ and his worthiness. So Christ is the one who brings the ability for us to even be considered. So we need to give him all the credit. All the credit is due to him and, and not to ourselves. Amen. All right, you guys. So the second verse the Lord gave me was first John chapter five, verse three. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. All right. And so this is the love of God. Right. So the, the action, the the daily life, the work that we do. Right. This is the love of God. God has shown us love in allowing us to participate. God has shown us love in making us more than sons and daughters. God has shown us love by giving us a role, right? And it says, for this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. So following after the things that the Lord has told us to do are is just a natural part of the process. Faith without works is dead. So we need to be making sure that we're walking forward in our faith. It says, and his commandments are not burdensome. So the things that he tells us to do are not burdensome. His yoke is easy. His burden is light, right? So it, it's not a burden at all. It, it's, it's something that's light upon us. So when you think of a burden, that's something heavy. That's something that's a weight. Right. So we we need to keep his commandments. We need to walk forward in the grace that he has given us. And and when we're done at the end of the day, we need to say, you know, we're unworthy servants. We have only done what was our duty. Right. Because it isn't as if we deserved even the role. It was Christ who uh, who did that, who brought all worthiness into play all of the goodness into play. Why? Because we weren't righteous. Our righteousness is as filthy rags. So we need that perfect covering over us to say that we, you know, we can participate. 
And so he's the one who should get the credit. He's the one who that, that should get the just due. All right. And so the third um, verse that the Lord gave me was Acts chapter two, verse 12. And all were amazed and perplexed saying to one another, what does this mean? All right. And so this is speaking about the Holy Spirit when the Holy Spirit had came down and was um, caused the people to speak in other languages, um, other languages that they could understand as their negative tongue. And so they were amazed by this. They were perplexed by this. They didn't understand what was going on. And so prophetically, the Holy Spirit was speaking to me that this is how it will be when the Holy Spirit actually leaves the church, right? Um, it was like this initially when it first came and it will be like this when he leaves the earth because um, there, there, there's not going to be an understanding, a quickening, an ability to have wisdom in that way anymore. And so um, where once the Holy Spirit will reveal things to um, people in that way, they're now going to have to dig out the information. They're going to have to figure it out themselves. They're going to have to manually cleanse their garments. They're going to have to go around and search out um, God, right. And, and figure it out themselves. So when this rapture occurs, there's going to be a flood of knowledge that the enemy is going to try to throw at people to try to answer what happened, right. To get people distracted and in disbelief and, and not following God. Right. But, but that perplexity doesn't mean that, you know, people will always, um, have no understanding. No, if they seek God out, there is a possibility for them to overcome. There is that possibility for them to manually cleanse their garments. So yeah, that was what the spirit was speaking to me about these scriptures. We need to make sure that we are, um, doing our duty, right? We need to make sure that we, um, are, are completing our work. And, and when we're done, say we were unworthy servants, not, expecting to get the glory from everything, right? Our glory comes in eternity. Our glory comes from the shining of the Lord down on us, giving us purpose. And so, um, and then the second scripture, you know, it's talking about the fact that God's duties, the things that we do for the Lord are not burdensome, right? And, and it is the love of God to keep his commandment. So we need to be walking in the love of God. We need to be keeping his commandments. We need to remember that faith without works is dead. And, and, and this life that we live is not burdensome. And if the enemy is trying to make you feel as if it is burdensome, then you need to realize who it is that you're talking to. You need to realize that it is the enemy that, and that what my pastor said, and I think I've given you guys this example before is that, you know, he, he told his wife to stand up. And he said, you know, this is how the Holy Spirit is. And he grabbed her hand and he just started walking with her. And he said, you'll know it's the enemy when it's like this. And he got behind his wife and he began to push her. And so, you know, the enemy tries to twist things. He tries to make us think that the the, the bird, the things that the, we do for the Lord are burdensome and they're not, they're not. If, if you walk by the spirit, it won't be a burden and you won't face that condemnation. You won't feel that that's the enemy. Amen. All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Lord God, for this word. Help us to receive it. Help us not to be a part of those who are perplexed and don't know what happened. Lord God, help us to keep your commandments and walk in them today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. All right, you guys, if there is anybody out there who would like to receive Jesus as their Savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Thank you, Father God, for this. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, you guys, if you have prayed that prayer and you believe that prayer, then the Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus himself when he comes to redeem his church. The Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth 
meaning he is going to show you the way and he's going to bless your path. Amen. One of the best ways to learn the voice of the Holy Spirit is to sit down, read your word, chew on your word and talk to him. He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So begin to seek his face today while he may be found. Um, also, one of the best um, ways to, um, one of the things that the Holy Spirit wants you to do is to make sure that you're going out and you find a church home. Allow yourself to be around other believers so that you can stay sharp in the word of God. Also go out and be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. And then go out and tell other people about Christ and what he's done for you in your life. Amen. All right, you guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you his children his peace. Take care.